Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about anatomy and positioning of the toes, the foot, and the ankle, which is our next unit, our first unit in RADS 130. So as we talk about the foot, we need to remember that we learned the bones of the hand, and if we think about it, there were three sets of bones in your hand. You had your phalanges, you had your metacarpals, and you had your carpals. In the foot, we've also got three sets of bones. Uh, there are 26 bones in total, and the three groups of bones that we have are the phalanges, the metatarsals, and the tarsals. As far as the phalanges are concerned, there is a a total of 14 phalanges. Uh, there's two phalanges in the great toe. There is three phalanges or are three phalanges in each of the other four toes. So in the big toe, uh, we've got the distal phalanx and the proximal phalanx. And in each of the other toes, we have three phalanges a proximal, a middle, and a distal phalanx. Even the, the little toe, the fifth toe, actually has three phalanges in it. Doesn't seem possible, it's not that big, but it too has uh, three phalanges. The joints in between are termed the interphalangeal joints, and similar to the way we named them in the hand, we named them the same in the foot. So we've got the interphalangeal joint of the great or first toe, the proximal interphalangeal joint of the second toe, the distal interphalangeal joint, of the second toe, and then correspondingly, it would be the same for the other toes as well, uh, where you have the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal phalangeal joint. Now, if you remember in the hand, we use the numbering system, um, and we said that the thumb was the first, the index the second, the middle was the third, uh, the ring finger was your fourth finger, and then the little finger uh, was your fifth finger. In the foot, we basically uh, only refer to them by number except for the uh, big toe or great toe. Uh, we start the numbering at the big or the great toe. So the great toe is toe number one. Then we have our second toe, our third toe, fourth toe, and the fifth toe. And we want to keep in mind that the IP joints are synovial diarthrodial hinge joints. And a total of how many in each uh, foot? There would be nine, right? We have the uh, first one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a total of nine interphalangeal joints being diarthrodial hinge joints. The next group of bones that we have that comprise the foot are the metatarsals. Uh, there are five of them. They are numbered, just like we numbered in the hand, numbered in the hand from the thumb side, or a number in the foot from the big toe side. So we've got the first metatarsal, the second metatarsal, the third, the fourth, and the fifth metatarsal. And each metatarsal, similar to each metacarpal, has a base, a body, and a head. In each phalanx, it's the same thing. Base, body, head, base, body, head, if we're taking a look at the foot. So we've got base, body, head of the first metatarsal, base, body, head of the proximal phalanx, and then the base, body, and head of the distal phalanx.
for joints, we have uh, articulations at two ends. Uh, we've got the uh, joint where it, the metatarsal joins the uh, phalan uh, phalanx, the phalanges. So we've got our metatarsal phalangeal joint, which there are five of them. And they are synovial condylar, or we can say ellipsoidal uh, types of joints. And then uh, down at the bases, it's not on the slide here, but down at the bases, uh, between the individual metatarsals, uh, there would be four individual joints. These are the intermetatarsal joints. Uh, as I mentioned, they're between the bases of the adjacent metatarsals, uh, and they're gliding types of joints. And then we get to our uh, tarsals. And there are a total of seven tarsal bones uh, that make up the foot. Uh, we've got the calcaneus, the talus, and the navicular. Those are uh, more of the posterior bones of the foot. And then our anterior uh, bones would be the uh, three cuneiforms. And we label the cuneiforms uh, from medial to lateral. So we've got the uh, medial cuneiform or the first cuneiform, the second cuneiform or intermediate cuneiform, and then the third uh, cuneiform, which would be the lateral uh, cuneiform. As far as the calcaneus is concerned, the, the calcaneus is your heel bone. It's the largest of the tarsal bones. Uh, there are special projections we can do for this uh, bone. Uh, I draw your attention to some of the parts of the calcaneus. I do want you to note that another term for calcaneus is oscalsis, O-S-C-A-L-S-I-S. Uh, as I mentioned, it's the largest tarsal bone. It forms the heel. Uh, it lies directly below the talus. Uh, its upper surface has three small, uh, smooth areas uh, where it's going to join with the talus. These joints actually would be called the subtalar joint area because they're right under the talus. Uh, its anterior end forms a joint with the posterior surface of the cuboid bone. And it has this special little ledge of bone that comes out right here. This little ledge helps to support the talus above, and that's called the sustentaculum talli. So the sustentaculum talli, a little shelf of bone that juts out from the uh, calcaneus, helping to uh, support the uh, talus above. Uh, then we've got the canial uh, tuberosity. Uh, it's its enlarged posterior end. Uh, it is visible, it's palpable, you can see it, it's basically what we call the heel bone area. And the Achilles tendon uh, is attached uh, to its posterior surface. Immediately superior to the uh, calcaneus or oscalsis is the talus. Another term for the talus is the astragalus. That's A-S-T-R-A-G-A-L-U-S, astragalus or talus. Uh, sometimes it's simply referred to as the ankle bone. And it sits between the distal ends of the uh, tibia uh, and the uh, calcaneus area. Uh, and it basically is there to transmit the body weight uh, to the calcaneus. Uh, you've got a large uh, posterior part, it's referred to as its body, and then the smooth upper part uh, is termed its trochlea. It's a smooth upper convex uh, surface. It's going to articulate with the lower end of the tibia. Uh, 
we mentioned, and we'll get to it when we get to ankle, but there is a term ankle mortis uh, that we're going to mention. So the medial and lateral surfaces of the body uh, of, the, uh, of the talus uh, below the trochlea are smooth. They articulate with the medial and lateral malleoli, and they form then the ankle mortis. So medial and lateral surfaces of body uh, below the trochlea are smooth, articulate with the medial and lateral malleoli. Uh, which are the distal portions of the tib and the fib, to form the ankle mortis. Let me get to the cuboid bone. It's, uh, it's called the cuboid bone because it's uh, kind of cube-shaped, basically. Uh, it uh, lies on the lateral side of the foot. You can see it there in uh, purple. Uh, and it has the calcaneus behind it. And the fourth and the fifth metatarsals are in front of it. Next, we've got the navicular bone. Let's uh, get this term navicular from navis, uh, which means a, a boat shaped, basically. Um, it lies anterior to the talus uh, and behind the three cuneiform bones. Uh, on the medial side of the ankle. And it has uh, one portion of, of note, which is called its uh, tuberosity. It's its prominent medial border. And then we get to our three cuneiforms. So as it says, they're named by location, medial, medial cuneiform, which would be the first cuneiform. Intermediate would be the uh, second cuneiform. And then the lateral cuneiform would be the uh, third cuneiform. Uh, the medial cuneiform is the largest of them, and the intermediate is actually uh, the smallest of them. There's a mnemonic that you might use to remember the uh, tarsals. Uh, it's chubby, twisted, never could cha-cha-cha. You can see the letters identified. First letters of those words would correspond to the letters of the individual tarsals. So calcaneus, the talus, the navicular, the cuboid, the cuneiform, the uh, medial, the intermediate cuneiform, and then the lateral cuneiform. Uh, it's not uh, mentioned in the slides here, but there are a, a couple of more joints that I do need you to know. Uh, the tarsometatarsal joints, the tarsometatarsal. Uh, where are they between the tarsals and the metatarsals? There are five of them, and you should know that those are synovial gliding joints. And then the little joints in between the individual tarsal bones are called our intertarsal joints. And those are synovial gliding joints as well. And that takes us into the ankle then. The ankle is formed, as it says, by the articulation between the talus and the lateral, med le sorry, the lateral malleolus of the fibula and the inferior surface of the tibia and the medial malleolus of the tibia. So your malleoli, I know we haven't studied the lower leg yet, but the malleoli are uh, the palpable bony extensions on each side of what you know to be a, the ankle. Uh, so we've got a medial malleolus, which is part of the tibia, and a lateral malleolus, which is part of the uh, fibula. Of note is the ankle joint um, is a synovial hinge type of joint. It only allows for flexion and extension. So you might say, well, there's some abduction and adduction we can do, rotation. Okay, The slight abduction, adduction, rotation motions of the ankle result from the intertarsals gliding movements rather than the ankle joint proper. So when we say the ankle joint, it's basically a hinge joint. The reason we can move 
uh, our ankle, our foot uh, abducted or adducted, or we can kind of move our foot in a circular motion. Well, that's all coming from the intertarsal joint. So here you've got a uh, drawing of the ankle. You can see, as I mentioned, the fibula with its lateral malleolus. And then you've got the tibia with its medial malleolus. And when we look at it, you can see that here is the talus. And this joint that is going around between the talus and the malleoli is known as the ankle mortis joint. We also have some small little sesamoid bones <clears throat> that are located, excuse me, in the foot. Uh, they're small detached bones. They're usually, uh, usually they form in uh, points of stress near a joint. We saw them in the hand, for example. In the foot, they're usually found on the posterior or plantar surface of the first uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint. It is possible to fracture them. Uh, there is going to be a special projection we're going to look at when we get to procedures. Um, and uh, since they are on the uh, bottom of the foot, which is the plantar aspect of the foot, uh, if you've got a broken one and you're putting pressure on that and stepping on it, it's very painful uh, if it should be fractured. The other thing that I'd like to note that isn't in the slides is actually the arches uh, of your foot. Uh, if you took a look at the foot from its medial aspect, and some people, but not all, because some people have what we call flat foot, um, but on most people, you would see an arch that would go from the front of the foot to the back of the foot. That's called your longitudinal arch. Uh, if you're flat foot, you actually lose that arch, uh, which can cause uh, a variety of, of problems and it really needs to be uh, addressed so you don't end up with uh, lower back pain and things like that. So the longitudinal arch, is, it's visible when you view it from the, it being the foot from its medial border. Uh, and it's maintained by some very strong ligaments that bind the bones together so that it helps to form that arch. Now what's not as apparent is another arch when you go from the medial side of the foot to the lateral side of the foot, and that is the uh, transverse arch. So we've got the longitudinal from the front to the back, and then we've got another arch transverse from uh, side to side. And architecturally, uh, this basically forms a, a very, very um, strong uh, support. If you think about it, um, like if you think of a, a dome in, a, in the Capitol or, or in a church, for example, there really is no pillar that holds up the, uh, that holds up the roof. It basically you've got two arches coming together and architecturally, that's a, that's a very strong uh, support system. Okay, same thing for our foot. So we've got this very strong support for the weight of our body.